Today's lesson is called The Binding of Fenrir. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff. I'm Roger. Welcome to our program, everybody. And today we're going to talk about our story, The Binding of Fenrir. Now, remember last time we introduced you to Fenrir. Fenrir is a wolf in Scandinavian mythology. Now, of course, they realize that Fenrir is a dangerous wolf. And they sent away his two siblings because they were dangerous too. But maybe they acted too late with Fenrir. He was a pop. They thought maybe all they need to do is keep an eye on him. But he soon grew to be enormous. And they've tried to bind him up with chains, but this wolf is strong. The wolf can break those chains really easily. Yes, they brought out a tough chain. The gods there in Asgard, they brought out a tough chain, and Fenrir broke it easily. Then they brought out a tougher chain, thinking, "Hey, we'll be able to bind him with this tougher chain." But then. Fenrir showed his true strength, and he was able to break this chain as well. So, at this point, this enormous wolf, Fenrir, is roaming freely. He's going to cause a whole lot of trouble there in Asgard if the gods don't do something quick. They've got to tie this wolf up quick. But how are they going to do it? How are they going to bind? Fenrir, and that's what we're going to learn about today. So let's go ahead and take a short break and learn how the gods finally find a way to bind Fenrir. Odin sent a messenger to the dwarves, asking them to make an unbreakable chain. They succeeded in forming one made of impossible things, such as the sound of a cat's footsteps, the roots of a mountain, the breath of a fish, the saliva of a bird. The sinews of a bear and the beard of a woman. 大家好，第一部分我们看到的单字是 unbreakable。这个字是形容词，表示牢不可破的、不易碎的。举例来说 ，When someone makes me a promise, I consider it to be unbreakable. 当某人对我做出承诺时，我认为它是牢不可破的。再来看到的单字是名词 footstep， 一只脚步声、足迹。例如 ，with my apartment window open, I could hear the footsteps of the pedestrians on the sidewalk. 我公寓的窗户打开时，能听到人行道上行人的脚步声。又或者说 ，the kids rushed to bed as soon as he heard the footsteps from the staircase. 当听到楼梯传来脚步声时，小孩迅速的冲回床上。再来，我们看到的单字是 saliva。这个字是名词，表示唾液、口水。例如。Our science teacher told us that the amylase in our saliva can help change starch into sugar. 自然老师告诉我们，唾液中的淀粉酶能帮助把淀粉转化成糖。又或者说 ，the baby dripped some saliva onto his clothes, which left some stains afterwards. 那个婴儿在衣服上滴了一些口水，不久后变成了污渍。接下来我们看到的单词是 sinew， 这个名词表示肌腱。举例来说 ，the pitcher was depressed after the doctor confirmed that the sinews around his shoulder become inflamed. 那位投手在医生确定他的肩膀周围的肌腱发炎后，十分沮丧。Okay, so our story continues. Remember, Odin is the head god at Asgard, and they don't know what to do. They're at their wit's end. They've got this wolf on their hands who has grown enormous, and they don't know what to do. The wolf keeps breaking those chains. So I guess Odin is going to look for some advice. So Odin sent a messenger to the dwarves. Asking them to make an unbreakable chain. 
Now, of course, dwarves. That refers to short, stocky people who are generally very good at making things out of metal. So, of course, they send a messenger, someone who's going to send a message to the dwarves. And Odin says, "Gee, you got to help me out here. I'm in a pickle. We've got this dangerous wolf, and it keeps breaking our chains. Can you guys do something for us? Make us an indestructible chain." Make us a chain that is unbreakable. Yeah, remember, Fenrir has broken those two previous chains, so now they need an unbreakable chain. So Odin thinks, you know what? The dwarves—they're good at mining, and they can make good stuff out of metal. So I'm going to commission the dwarves to make me an unbreakable chain. Now Odin didn't go to the dwarves himself, okay, and put this order in. Yeah, make me an unbreakable chain. No, no, no. He sent a messenger to the dwarves to give the dwarves this. Information. Anyways, what is a messenger? A messenger is a person who carries messages from one person to another. Yes, Odin sent this messenger out to the dwarves with a message from him. The messenger carried this message to the dwarves and told the dwarves what Odin wanted, i.e., an unbreakable chain. Now, dwarves. Okay, that is the plural form of the word dwarf. D W A R F, and then dwarves is the plural form. Like I said before, D W A R V E S. Indeed. So they never turned down a challenge. So Odin asked them to make an unbreakable chain, and they succeeded in forming one. Made of impossible things, such as the sound of a cat's footsteps, the roots of a mountain, the breath of a fish, the saliva of a bird, the sinews of a bear, and the beard of a woman. My goodness, those are some very unusual ingredients. We're calling those things. Impossible things. Okay, this of course occurs in mythology. The dwarves don't use regular things like maybe some iron and some other chemicals mixed together and then heated up to a high temperature in order to make a chain. No, they're using these really weird things, these impossible things, and they turn them all into this really, really strong chain. So let's talk about some of these、uh, ingredients here. These impossible things. We've got the sound of a cat's footsteps, and a footstep, of course, is when someone walks. Each time they move their foot is a footstep. And you know, when ladies wear high heels, of course, you can easily hear the sound of their footsteps. But cats, their paws are quite soft. How can you hear the foot? Footstep of a cat. You can't. It's impossible. So these dwarves, they sure are creative. They know all about mining and metals and stuff like that, and they know that every metal has a breaking point. So they think we can't make a chain out of metal. So let's make a chain out of these impossible things, like a cat's footstep or something like that. The roots of a mountain. Trees have roots. Mountains? No way. The breath of a fish. Remember, fish breathe with gills. They don't take in air and inhale and exhale air like we do. So they don't have a breath. Then the saliva of a bird, the spit of a bird. Who's ever heard tell of such a thing? And then we have this: the sinews. Of a bear. Now, this one I'm not so sure about. Maybe you can't get the sinew of a bear because bears are big and ferocious, and they would get you first. But I imagine bears do have sinew. By the way, sinew, S-I-N-E-W. That's a word for tendons or ligaments. It's a general term to talk about these types of tissues. Okay, these tissues that connect muscle to bone or bone to bone. Exactly, those are sinews. Okay, so we're describing all these ingredients as impossible things, but what the heck? This is mythology. Anything can happen, and I'm quite confident that the chain that the dwarves make is going to keep the wolf as a prisoner. Okay, let's move on now to the next part of our lesson. We'll listen to it first. 
When Fenrir saw the thin, ribbon-like chain, he suspected that there was magic involved. I don't want to have that ribbon put on me, he said. Let one of you place his hand in my mouth as a pledge that this is done in good faith. Tyr stepped up to the plate, promising to free Fenrir if he couldn't break the chain. Tyr then placed his right hand in Fenrir's jaws as they bound him. Here in the second paragraph it says, When Fenrir saw the thin, ribbon-like chain, he suspected that there was magic involved. So yes, Fenrir saw this new chain, but it was a ribbon-like chain. Okay, chains are usually quite thick, and they're heavy, and they're made of metal. This one was ribbon-like. And of course, as you know, a ribbon is very thin. You might put a ribbon on a birthday present or something like that. There They're colorful, but they are very thin and they're very weak. So, of course, Fenrir saw this ribbon. He thought, "Hmm, that of course is not going to hold me if it's a real ribbon." So, I suspect something is up here. I suspect that there is magic involved, which means it has to do with magic. Somebody used magic to make this chain that looks like a ribbon. Yeah, Fenrir is one smart pup. He's thinking that next the gods are going to bring a super big chain made out of metal or something like that, and when they show up with this ribbon-like chain, he says, "Hey, something is going on here. I'm suspicious." Yes, he suspected that there was magic involved. That is, he believed that magic was a part of this situation. Yes, this ribbon. There's something up here. There's some magic involved. I don't know what's going on here. So, anyways, yes, he believed that magic was a part of this scheme. He believed that it played some role in this chain and how it was made. That's what he was thinking. And he says, "I don't want to have that ribbon put on me." He said, "Yes, I don't want that ribbon-like chain. That ribbon put on me. Don't bind me with that." And then he also says, "Let one of you place his hand in my mouth as a pledge that this is done in good faith." By the way, one of the first things that you learn when you get a dog is that you never put your hand in a dog's mouth. That's a recipe for disaster. They've got big, sharp teeth and stuff like that. So don't put your hand in a dog's mouth, and don't put your hand in a wolf's mouth. Either, if you ever get the chance to do so. Anyways, here we have the word pledge to talk about. Here, a pledge is kind of like a promise or an oath. Okay, it's a solemn promise, though, or a solemn oath. As a pledge, right? In this particular case, the word pledge is being used as a noun. Make a pledge to your company, for example. But pledge can also be a verb to pledge your allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. We used to have to say the Pledge of Allegiance before we began classes in school. But in this particular case, yes, put that hand in my mouth as a promise that you're doing it in good faith. In good. Good faith just means you're being sincere. You're not trying to fool me. There you go. Next, Tyr. Remember, Tyr, the god of war, is very courageous. Tyr stepped up to the plate, promising to free Fenrir if he couldn't break the chain. So it looks like Tyr is going to be the person to put his hand in Fenrir's mouth. Boy, is Tyr a courageous fellow. Anyways, it says here that. Tear stepped up to the plate. Ha ha ha! I just love baseball metaphors. When you're about to go up to bat, you are stepping up to the plate. Okay, but we're not using this particular phrase literally here. Here, when Tear steps up to the plate, he acts. He takes action. He's the one who does this thing. Kind of interesting because I don't think baseball is a popular sport in Scandinavian countries. But in any case, he steps up to the batter's box and he's going to have his go at this. So he promises to let Fenrir go if he can't break that ribbon-like chain. And Tyr then placed his right hand in Fenrir's jaws 
as they bound him. So bound here, of course, refers to binding someone to tie someone up. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson. Let's move on now and see what happens next. Soon Fenrir was unable to move, and the more he struggled, the tighter the chain became. When the gods broke their promise, Fenrir bit off Tyr's hand in anger. The bound wolf was then tied to a rock. His mouth was propped open with a sword, and the saliva that flowed from it formed Vaughn, the river of expectation. Fenrir lay there in that far-off place, alone and in agony, only to be freed when his destiny finally called. 第三部分，我们看到的单词是动词 prop， 意指支撑、支持。Prop something open 表示使某物撑开者。例如 ，Bradley propped his bicycle against the wall and entered the house. Bradley 把他的脚踏车靠着墙放着，然后进入屋内。又或者说 ，I think it looks unsafe for the soldiers to prop the bunkers open merely with some wood sticks. 我觉得士兵仅用木条将碉堡撑起，看起来很不安全。今天最后一个单词是 agony， 为名词，意指肉体或精神的极度痛苦。In agony 表示处于极度痛苦、煎熬的状态。举例来说 ，The injured man lay on the ground in agony, waiting for the ambulance to take him to the hospital. 那位受伤的人痛苦地躺在地上。等待救护车将他送到医院。又或者说，当 Jacqueline 往抢匪的鼻子上揍一拳时，他痛苦的呻吟。英文就是 The robber groaned in agony when Jacqueline punched him in the nose. Okay, the binding of Fenrir is complete. Okay, Tyr's hand is in Fenrir's jaws, and the rest of the gods there have bound him with this unbreakable magic chain. Now Fenrir still doesn't like what's going on here, and I bet he's hoping that he can break out of that chain. Anyways, soon though, soon Fenrir was unable to move. And the more he struggled, the tighter the chain became, which is not good. Now, before we move on here, we've got the word chain. We've used it many times. To be super clear, a chain is not unlike a piece of metal rope. Yeah, chains are made of links. These pieces of circular metal that are connected or interconnected in an interlocking manner. I remember making paper chains when I was in elementary. Elementary school, but those were just for decoration. If you want a strong chain, you're going to be using metal links. Okay, links, of course, are parts of a chain. So it's kind of interesting here. The more he struggled, the more he fought against the chain, the tighter the chain became. So here we have this pattern. The more something is the case. The more something else is the case. So the more he moved, the tighter the chain became. It was more difficult for him to escape. Now, when the gods broke their promise, Fenrir bit off Tyr's hand in anger. So I guess they made that promise、uh, that they weren't going to harm him, they weren't going to tie him up. But here, the wolf could see that they broke their promise. And that's bad. He was angry. So what did the wolf do? He bit off Tyr's hand in anger. To bite something off means you use your teeth and you remove that thing from the other thing. And you could bite off someone's head, for example, if you're a big vicious monster. There you go. The binding of Fenrir is now complete. The magic unbreakable ribbon chain. It worked, and yes, Fenrir was angry about this. Remember, he thought that the gods were doing this in good faith. Okay, but they broke their promise because they wanted Fenrir tied up. Remember, he has that terrible destiny, and he's enormous and scary and a wolf. Okay, so they did this in bad faith. They broke their promise, and for that reason, Fenrir. Bit off Tyr's hand. He did so in anger. Then the bound wolf was then tied to a rock, and that's not all. His mouth was propped open with a sword, and the saliva that flowed from it formed Vaughn, the river of expectation. 
Cool. So even though the wolf bit off the hand, he was still tied up. So now he's tied to a rock, and they propped his mouth open with a sword. They kept it open. To prop open in this case means to keep it open. You could prop open your door in your house so that it doesn't close. And in this case, they used a sword to keep his mouth open. And the spit and the saliva flowed out from that mouth, and this river was formed. Now Fenrir lay there in that far-off place, alone and in agony. If you're in agony, you are in pain, a lot of pain, and I can imagine that to be quite painful, having a sword stuck in your mouth. And only to be freed, it says here, when his destiny finally called. So I guess eventually Fenrir will be freed from that terrible situation. But for now, he's in a bad situation. He's in great pain. There you have it. All right, folks. With that, it's time for you guys to hear from the Chinese teacher. When Fenrir saw the thin ribbon-like chain, he suspected that there was magic involved. When Fenrir saw the thin ribbon-like chain, he suspected that there was magic involved. When Fenrir saw the thin ribbon-like chain, he suspected that there was magic involved. When Fenrir saw the thin ribbon-like chain, he suspected that there was magic involved. When Fenrir saw the thin ribbon-like chain, he suspected that there was magic involved. When Fenrir saw the thin ribbon-like chain, he suspected that there was magic involved. When Fenrir saw the thin ribbon-like chain, he suspected that there was magic involved. When Fenrir saw the thin ribbon-like chain, he suspected that there was magic involved. When Fenrir saw the thin ribbon-like chain, 怀疑某件事的真实性，认为那件事啊不可能发生。举例来说 ，I suspect it will rain tomorrow。我猜想明天会下雨。那如果把句子改成 I doubt it will rain tomorrow， 就表示我不相信明天会下雨。我认为这件事不太可能会发生。好，同样在第二部分有一个句子是。Tear stepped up to the plate, promising to free Fenrir if he couldn't break the chain. Tear, he 挺身而出，并且承诺如果 Fenrir 他没有办法破坏链子，就会释放他。好，那么句子里面有一个片语叫 step up to the plate。它本来的意思是指说棒球赛的球员啊，他们站上本垒板旁边准备打击。那其中的 plate 就是指 home plate， 也就是棒球场上的本垒板。那这个用语它引申的意思就是挺身而出去承担责任，或者是采取行动做某事。那通常带有这件事情可能不容易处理的语义。那我们顺便补充几个跟棒球相关的片语。第一个是 touch base， 字面上的意思是触及垒包。那这个片语常常会出现在商业用语里面，来表达说和某人见面聊一聊，以便能了解某件事的进度进展。那么 touch base 后面可以接 with somebody 来表达说跟某人联系，告知相关的讯息啊，或者是事情的进展。例如 ，We'll touch base next Monday to see where we're at。我们下周一再见面聊一聊，看看进度如何。好，第二个片语是。Touch all the bases. 字面上的意思是触及所有的垒包，踏遍四个垒包。那引申的意思就是面面俱到，把所有该考虑的重点啊，或是主题都包括在内了。例如 ，Janet made sure that she touched all the bases in her report. Janet 确保她自己的报告呢有面面俱到，所有该写的都有写到。好，第三个片语是 off base。off base 原本是指棒球场上跑垒者啊，他离开垒包，那这时候是不是很容易被触杀出局呢？那像这样的行为就是非常要不得的行为，所以这个用语它引申的意思是完全弄错啊，或者是认知假设错误。好， off base 前面常常会用 way 来修饰，那么 way w a y 这个字它有很非常的意思。Way off base 就相当于我们说的大错特错。例如 ，His theory was way off base. 他的见解错的很离谱。好，那么以上是今天重点整理。接着我们回顾今天的单词吧。Messenger. The messenger raced across the country on horseback to deliver the king's letter. Dwarf. 
Stories tell of dwarves that live in the mountains beyond the village. Involved. Who would like to be involved in our project? Pledge. Hope made a pledge to herself that she would get in shape and run a marathon by the end of the year. Prop. Beth propped her door open with a rock so the wind wouldn't blow it shut. Agony. Derek was in agony after he had his wisdom teeth removed. Discussion starter starts now. All right, everyone, it's time for our discussion starter. Roger, do you think the gods made the right choice about how to deal with Fenrir and his siblings? Well, I agree with their choice. Yes, indeed, you need to throw those things to hell and into the ocean. But heck, if you've got a wolf that's a cute little puppy, it's very difficult to send it away to its death or something like that. So yes, I think they were justified in keeping it in Asgard as a cute little puppy, even though they failed to tame that pup in the end. I think, on the other hand, I think the gods made a mistake because they were being short-sighted. They weren't really looking into the future, okay? Remember, everyone, destiny is destiny, and you can't escape it even if you are a god. So I think these gods could have figured out a better way to handle this situation with Fenrir and his siblings. Okay, everyone, with that, today's article is now complete. But, as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See you, See you next, next time. time.